I got you through the, oh, I'm gonna have to move. It's not a good position to film through the bars. Hey guys, it's, uh, I don't know, Saturday, uh, late morning. <laughs> I don't know, but it's still morning. In the shop of John, he's making some really uh, nice vases today. I just thought I would pop in and show you. I'm gonna move a little bit so it might get kind of jiggly. I'm not getting a better position. These are um, some inventory that we're making for. Uh, he's hanging that up there. He's going to get a. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. Another gather of glass. Anyway, this is some inventory we're making to sell down at uh, Alabama at the. Um, Classy Sassy Glass Show at um, Rogersville, Alabama with Stephen Embry. John and I will be set up at Stephen's shop, uh, Stephen's Uniques in Rogersville, Alabama. We're going to be uh, making glass there at his shop for three days, November 6th, 7th, and 8th. And I'll be set up inside the shop selling um, some of John's work. Might bring a few Fenton pieces as well. But it's a beautiful fall day, overcast and cool, which is lovely for glass making. Yeah. I've never made that. So here, John is putting uh, a black glass uh, ring on this. Um, on his gather here. Uh, the color that we're making this vase out of is our frit mix that we use called Florida Mix. There, that's better. We're going to eat this in and we'll do a king top frisk on this. But right now, what you got. Spring on it. Spring quiet. And when he'll go, he'll go over to the bench and use an ice pick and put a uh, King Tut swirl pattern in that uh, black, uh, using those black rings that he just put on. Get a reheat. You can only do a couple of uh, movements with your glass before you have to reheat. Peggy says she got her pumpkins and loves them. Oh, good deal. you like them. Lynn also got hers. It's great. We, um, I think I have all the pumpkins shipped out that were paid for. Maybe I have one that was paid yesterday that I'll be shipping. Um, so everybody should be getting them pretty quickly. Hey Terry, it is a beautiful day for glass blowing. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't even. There's no no visible sweat. No. I'm sweating everywhere. John's going to blow this into a mold. This is an iron mold, and he's dipping it into a bucket of water. And the reason he's doing that is we, when he puts that hot glass in there, we want it to form a layer of steam between the steel and the glass. Thank you. 
If anybody has any questions, okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, just feel free to ask. Yeah. You want to talk about what you're doing? Or you want me to? Yes, I will. <laughs> I said, do you want to talk about what you're doing or do you want me to? I'm going to have you do it. Okay. They just figured they couldn't hear me. I don't know if they can or not. Well, they're doing it. Yeah. No, um, we're not making a pumpkin. We're making vases. Uh, large, va large swung vases. Now, right now, it looks more like a pumpkin than a vase. Yeah, you know, pretty much everything starts out looking the same. Uh, more or less. Right now he's just uh, heating and shaping the glass, putting putting a little air into it. Um, he'll be doing another gather of glass over this one. I'm gonna get on my where I twist it. I don't get it flat. It'll pick up a bubble right there. I don't want any bubbles in. So sometimes you do. Sometimes if you want a bubble, you just want a little swirl. Sometimes you don't. This particular case, I don't. Um, no, Jamie, our studio is not at our house. Wendy, right now we are producing inventory to take down to the show in Rogersville. So, um, depending on how we sell down there, we'll, uh, we'll decide when we're going to do another all John, all John auction. Um, just depends on how much inventory we have when we get back. But we've put together a uh, mobile glass studio, and John's been working on that a lot the last few weeks to try to get all the equipment together and everything um, fixed in the trailer, things like that. So we haven't made a lot of inventory. Where is it? There it is. Of course, we did those pumpkins, and that took uh, a bit of time to get all those pumpkins. And we uh, do want to thank everybody that bought the pumpkin of the year. Oh, absolutely, thank you guys very much. You helped us buy a mobile glass studio. Yeah. So. I appreciate it. So John, had, he just gathered a, a third layer of crystal glass over his colored glass. And here he's letting a bit of it drip off. He's going to cut it off with a shear. There you go. So that'll ensure he has a fairly thin layer of crystal glass over his color. And then uh, he's rolling it in a, in a block. What's a block made of, John? It's made of carbon. That's a carbon block. And that um, shapes the piece, smooths the piece. Also helps to cool uh, the outside surface a little bit. So the process he's in now is basically shaping um, the glass uh, and getting it ready to put into the mold. When you say this one is going to be a swung vase, are we going to get to see John swing this one out? Yes, you are. And, uh, you know, things happen. sometimes things happen. If it flies off the pipe or fall, you know, whatever. Things happen, but we'll film it anyway, good or bad. I'll you film it. Yeah. I did go through all our pumpkin inventory yesterday. And I picked out the, some real nice ones. Sorry about that, guys. Somehow I paused it, but it's still here, so we're good. Okay, yeah. So he's getting ready to go in the mold. See, he's swinging it. It's stretching the glass out a little bit. 
you have to get the glass into a particular shape for it to fit in your mold and it varies from mold to mold uh, what shape you're looking for this is a mold that we an iron mold that we did purchase from the Fenton Art Glass Company it's a base mold so he's just blowing uh, he's watching it expand He's turning it to keep a mold line off of it, and there you go. Now somebody asked what color it was going to be. It's a frit mix color called Florida Mix uh, with a turquoise interior and a black uh, King Tut threads on it. Of course, when the glass is hot, it all looks orange, and you really can't tell what color it's actually going to be. That's our friendly train. train. That's a Max's train, we call it, yeah. Uh, uh, we get several trains a day, and you can probably see it there in the background going by. That's how close we are to the track. So John is um, putting water with a file on that line where he wants that glass to break off. He's cooling it. And it will indicate to the glass where to break off. Okay, all right. So now he's going to go over here to the knockoff bench. He's going to tap on that pipe. And then, there you go. Now he's separated from his blow pipe. Uh, and he's going to get a punty and punty up to it, finish out the other end. You can see as it cools. Some of the colors are coming out in the glass now. John is over here preparing the punty, the punty rod. He's going to form a temporary attachment to the bottom of that glass. Okay, and now it'll go back to the glory, to the glory hole and reheat. And there he's introducing it slowly back into the heat so he doesn't thermal shock it. Anyway, I was telling you about pumpkins. I'm talking to them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was telling you about pumpkins. I went through yesterday, we went through and sorted out some pumpkins, and I picked out some that I really like, and I'm going to um, put them up for sale tomorrow on my page, probably. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so watch for that. I think they're going to be a uh, first want type of situation. Hey, Max. I, hey, Max, I sent you a message. I haven't had a chance to see if you answered me. So right now, John is in the process of heating, uh, keeping the piece hot, and then uh, he is shaping the top of the vase the way he wants it. He's opening it up, is what he's doing. He's going to open it up, reheat it, um, spin it out, and uh, flare and uh, ruffle it. So there, he's used his shears to cut off the excess glass. Good, Mark. I'm glad you got them and you like them. Should be a lot of pumpkin deliveries today. We have shipped uh, 150 or so pumpkins out. So as you can see, this is just a re re basically a repetitive uh, process here. Heat it up, 
do some shaping to it, heat it up again. See how that's opening up? It's almost a straight sided now. I think he'll well, let me stop here. Oh, it's a yeah. really nice place if I stopped right now. Yeah, well, we have a plan, John. <laughs> Man's got a plan. All right. So he's, uh, I probably didn't see him do that, but he opened the doors a little bit wider on the glory hole. It has three sets of doors, um, so you can have different size of openings. Are you going to spin it now? Okay. So this is going to be the final uh, process here. This is where he's going to spin it out and flare it. Okay, so see how he's spinning it? Centrifugal force is opening that up. And then as he drops it down, then gravity pulls it down into the ruffle shape. Wait a sec, wait a sec, okay. There you go had it all zoomed in on you over there. And then he's just going to tap the punty and uh, it's going to hopefully let go. Don't, don't lose that. <laughs> don't lose it on camera. We lost one today exactly that way. Just like that it slid off of where he's knocking it off at. And, uh, so right now what he's doing is he's heating where the punty uh, was at least a little scar there. He's heating it up and he's going to use our, our um, crown logo stamp to mark the bottom. And that also covers up that punty scar. So it serves two purposes. He's going to put his Kevlar gloves on or whatever they're made of. Kevlar. Kevlar. And he's going to grab a little heat on those gloves just so he doesn't thermal shock that piece with the gloves when he picks it up. And it's going into the annealing oven. And that will hold out at 900 degrees all day while we're finished working. And then we'll shut it off when we get ready to go home. And it'll uh, cool down about one degree a minute. Um, so you want to make another of that color so I don't have to change up the color? No, okay. Yeah, we'll see another one. We'll keep going. Yeah, we'll make another one. Dude, wait. <laughs> Do John's fingers ever cramp up from constantly turning the pipe? Oh yes, God. and the hotter it is, and the more you sweat, the more body parts cramp up on you. I wounded a tendon right there about two weeks ago, and it still hurts. Yes, yeah, so a couple weeks ago it was really hot, and it was late in the day, and he was he was pretty tired, but uh, his hands started to cramp up, uh, and uh, uh, it was bad. He just had to force that finger down to, so he could use it, and it... Uh, damaged his tendon so yes uh, and then uh, in the, at night if you don't take your uh, magnesium ma and your magnesium and your potassium then you you run the risk of leg cramps so I just sweat you but sweat those chemicals out of your system yeah and you can't help but sweat at times you know when you're running this way yeah that's 2300 degrees yeah. blasting out at you and you have to stand right in front of it five foot away or less. I'm going to show you the color, uh, the frit that he's picking up right now. That's the, uh, this is the interior color. And this is the frit mix, that's the exterior color. And then he's putting black over that. Yeah, yeah, he's putting a layer of white in between those two. We call that mix number thirteen. No, it's number thirteen. Uh, Florida mix is the color we're using right now. We've made other items out of that color. Betty says. Pick, Betty Merrill says pickle juice. Pickle juice. All right. Uh, there you go. We, we actually have a great big. Uh, <laughs> we actually have a big jar of pickles in the freezer, in the refrigerator. I miss seeing you at the Kansas City. All right. 
Okay, so here he's going to go back into the furnace. This is crystal glass. Keep it at around 2100 degrees. So he's going to gather another layer of crystal glass over his, uh, over the blue. He's going to let a bit of that drip off. And with that glass that he's cutting off there, it's going down into a bucket. Later in the day, he'll put it back in the tank and remelt that down. And there he's picking up white, white powder. And that's going to separate the uh, interior color from the exterior colors. Just another layer of white going on. And those bags that you see there on that bench, that's our different fritz that we're using today. Those old glass workers, um, like the guys that worked at the Fenton factory, they were used to this. Um, the heat really didn't ever seem to bother them very much, because um, they definitely were used to used to it. I personally can't cannot do this. I couldn't stand in front of that heat like that. At the Fenton factory, they used to have air tubes. They would blow air on uh, on the workers which helped them a little bit. Here we just have fans. Now John's just putting some air into this. He's keeping that, keeping a good shape and keeping the bubble in the center. That's very important. Keep your bubble in the center. If not, you'll be off. Your piece will be wanky. That's the best way to describe it, wanky. And now here he's using a wood block. He keeps soaked in water. And again, that water between the wood and the glass forms a layer of steam and the glass just kind of floats on that layer of steam. Uh, here's a question, no. Uh, did John work at the Fenton factory? No. Yeah, no, he never worked at the factory. John was an orthodox prosthetist by trade. He made artificial limbs and braces for 45 years and glass blowing was uh, a hobby for him. Uh, he retired um, this June, so we're going uh, not full-time glass making, um, but definitely more than he used to do. Okay, so he got a little bit more crystal glass, he's dripping that off. Pick up the uh, outer color. Heat that in. So Julie asks if we'll be making any special ornaments like the pumpkins for order. We're trying to figure out what we want to make for our Christmas special. I don't know if it should be an ornament or a Christmas tree. And there he's got a little uh, jig that he made to hang, hang that piece while he, so he can work by himself. So he's going to go over here to this little color pot we call it. And he's going to gather some black glass out of there. We have three colors in there right now. Three little pots with different colors in them. We usually keep black, white, and red in there. Sometimes we use blue instead of the red. That's our normal colors. What row? There's a little mistake. Nobody, nobody even saw it, John, except for me. <laughs> So what happened was it was really hot when he hung it upside down and it fell back on itself. It's going to be, have to um, reshape it. Do you want me to hold your black? And somebody asked a price on the vases. 
Leah, these vases are going to be two twenty-five. Be the price on them. You're welcome, Beth. Okay, so here comes another train. Wow. So here John is applying some black glass. He's putting it on in rings now. Or it's just rings around the uh, the gather there. I probably won't be able to narrate over the train, it's pretty loud. What pattern are you going to pick into that? Uh, I'm probably going to do a king tut. A king tut, okay. It so he's well. yeah. So he's going to use his ice pick and he's going to pull through that black glass that he just applied as soon as he gets it hot enough. So right now he's got a line on it. And uh, he'll put uh, what we call them king tut swirls in it. Yeah. There he is with his ice pick. Probably not the best video operator ever. Did you get the general idea? Back to the bench, ice pick. You can only get one or two swirls in there before the glass gets too cold to move it. And you don't ever really want to let your uh, glass get too cold because it just um, takes too long to re get it all hot again. You lose your core temperature and it's very difficult to get the core hot again. And you have to keep the glass above. What's the fracture temperature on this glass, John? How, how hot do we need to keep it to keep it from breaking? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I can tell you if you leave your glass out in it and you let it get below 900 degrees, it will break. Um, that's why you use an annealer to control the rate at which the glass cools. Um, because if you don't, it will it will break. And now he's going to work to smooth all that uh, out and make it one uniform piece of glass. And he's rolling it in the block. Going to reheat. So. Oh, I 
Okay, so we're going to go back to um, dipping the mold. Again, this is an iron mold. He dips it in the water. And when he puts that hot glass in that iron mold with the water, it's going to form a layer of steam. He's going to turn the piece as he's blowing it. It's going to float on that layer of steam, and he's turning it to keep the uh, mold marks, uh, seams, out of the piece. And the iron mold, it also has vent holes. And if you don't keep your piece turning, you can get little, uh, little pock marks uh, from the glass trying to go out through the vent holes. So he will be keeping his glass turning. And these trains are something today. The train is almost stopped at. Well, it's going very, very slow on the track. Okay, so John has let that cool down. He's going to get another layer of crystal over the top of that. And this will be his last gather of glass for this piece. So if you've been watching, you can see that he layers that glass on, adds color um, between the layers, works the pattern into it. Here he's in the block again. And again, this is just smoothing and shaping the piece, cooling the outside surface. Now the process will be um, shaping this uh, gather here uh, to fit the mold. Okay, right there he's using wet newspaper in his hand. He can, you can add a lot of different pressure if you use the newspaper with your hand to really uh, get that shape that you're looking for. So he's shaping, adding a little air, reshaping. Grab a reheat. As he swings it, that's stretching the piece out. And that, uh, it's called a marver. What he's rolling that out on is a marver. And again, that's just an additional step to shape the piece, pull the outer edge. And again, he's just preparing to go into the mold. If you don't get it the right shape, if it's too fat at the neck, the mold will pinch the piece. If it's too thin, if it's too skinny, then the glass will blow out and be too thin. So it's you have to learn to mold and uh, know what you're know what you're shooting for. Okay, so there is in the mold. Now, usually I'm the mold boy. Everybody, if you if you help in the shop, you're a boy, whether you're a boy or not. So usually I'm the mold boy, but he's he's his own mold boy with this one. Just kicks it open. He held hold, held that mold shut with his feet, and then just kicks it open when he's ready. Okay. And there is the shape that uh, the base is from the mold. What he's going to do now is just get it back up to an even temperature. Um, so he's got happy glass to work with. And he's going to use his jacks 
No, nope, he doesn't like that one. He's shaking his head. Mm -hmm. that, it blew out. Oh, so what happened was it was too thin. All right. There we go. So he's going to try to save this piece. It's not kind of. It's not coming out exactly the way he wanted it to. So I'm not sure what it'll make. Whatever it wants to be. Yeah, at this point the glass is in control now. All right, so he's going to go to the marver and reshape that piece. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a pretty good uh, problem. It, it collapsed. And it collapsed in that spot where it's thin. So it looks like he's going to use his jacks and he's going to cut off that thin area down there. Another idea. Oh. Another oh, changed his mind. Another idea, he said. It wants to be a lampshade. wants to be a lampshade, okay. That's what I said. It whispered. It whispered, John, I want to be a lampshade. Glass whisperer. Yeah, John's a glass whisperer. <laughs> It's similar, Pamela, to how they swung the old bases. The centrifugal force is the same. Uh, the, you know, um, hanging it down for gravity is the same. But Fenton, instead of using a punty, 99% uh, of the time they use this, what's called a snap, um, which is hard to explain without showing you one. But you'll notice on, on most of your Fenton pieces, you have a uh, Marie at the bottom. They call it the Marie. Um, and they have these snaps that snapped around that Marie at the bottom and it held it very securely and that's how they finished out the top parts of their bases. So John is doing something very risky and it may or may not work out for him. But he had put that hot... Nope, it's broken. Okay, he tried to save it. Not successful. Okay, guys, you want to make another of that color or you want to switch oh, up the color? Me too. All right. All right. All right. I guess we'll keep that's going. What, that's what happens, guys. Yeah, that's what happens. And, and to tell you the honest truth, that's one of the things that runs the price up on, on buying handmade glass um, is the failure. The failures. <laughs> if all came out, it'd be good. Yeah. Now, we run... Uh, um, electric furnaces here, uh, propane glory hole, and we have, my hands get uh, crampy too, we have a couple of smaller electric furnaces here, one over there, so we run a large electric bill, and of course our needlers are electric, so our electric bill is high, um, we run through a lot of propane as well, so um, generally in the studio your utilities are your number one expense and then your labor and then your materials and uh, one thing I'll say about Fenton uh, production in a factory like Fenton um, they would have a lot of guys working on a shop. The group of guys that would be making one item would be called a shop. And they would have mul multiple people in one shop. And each person basically had one specific job. So they would have probably four or five, maybe even six pieces going at one time in the shop. And they would just pass them around uh, person to person. Each person would do their whatever their job happened to be on that piece. Um, so, for example, snapping it up and then swinging it out, that would be, you know, one guy's job. It wouldn't be the same guy who, who blew it in the mold. Um, it would be another person. And that's how they kept their production up, where they could get uh, a quantity of glass produced. We're here. We just do it. It's pretty much, John pretty much does a one-man shop. It's nice to have help, and there are some processes that he has to have help for, but he's gotten pretty good at being a one-man show.
when Dave Fetty comes here and works, then John is um, Dave's helper. He does everything that Dave needs. Um, so he gathers his bits that he uses to make hearts and things like that. Operates his mold. You know, he just does everything. Any, you know, every anything that Dave happens to need keeps the shop running. Something we learned with the shop really quickly, really early on, is you have to be a bit, you have to be kind of handy to uh, to have a glass studio because the equipment uh, breaks down frequently. Um, you have to be able to change out the elements in your uh, furnace. You have to be able to diagnose electrical problems. Um, I guess the only thing you don't have to be is a plumber. Yeah, you even have to have some plumbing skills. So, uh, yeah. Uh, question, can you reheat the pieces that are messed up? Uh, not really, Penny. Usually, if something goes wrong, you can try to save it and make it into something else, and uh, every once in a while that works. But generally, if a piece cracks, yeah, I mean, you're, you're pretty much done with it. Um, right, and you can't just you can't just throw the glass back in and remelt it down because it's all mixed up now, different colors. Yeah, we do separate our crystal and remelt that. The you can see down here this broken stuff. That that will you can sometimes you yeah. There's a broken piece from that base. Um, there are people that like to do uh, crafty stuff with it, um, and if you throw it all in your tank and melt it all down, all different colors, it's very interesting. It becomes a light blue. We just we call it tank blue. So you can remelt it all, and uh, if you want to make tank blue, but I, I will tell you, you get pretty sick of tank blue. Sorry about that, guys. Hit that pause button again. Anyway, so John's still working on this piece. He's picking up the color again. Uh, is this a full-time job? No, um, we're trying to avoid any kind of a full-time job, Jan, because um, John just retired from his uh, 45 years uh, working in the same field. He just retired in June. So we're trying to um, only work the glass part-time, keep it fun. Keep us free to do other things. John likes to go to the lake. So here. I typically do about, you know, if I come into work, I typically do about four hours here. Yeah. It's four to five. Especially through the summer, it's so hot. You got to start really early and you got to get out of here. Things are going really good. They were going really good this morning. Uh, I'll take a little longer. Okay, so John had just he just gathered some black glass out of the color pot. He's going to heat that in. And he's going to use that to um, put strings around this uh, his main gatherer there. It's going to be the decoration. We're going to call it we call it the King Tut decoration. So what that is is he uses an ice pick to pull through those rings and swirl it around and it makes a um, uh, we call it the King Tut swirl. So here he's going to add the rings. This is how you make pulled feather as well. This is how you start out to make pulled feather. You just use your ice pick in a different manner. Drapery. Yes, you make drapery the same way.
can he do lamps? Yes, Jan, he does make lamps. That piece that he had to throw away there, um, he was going to try to cut that down to make a lampshade out of it, but it, it, had it had cracked too far up into the piece to do that, so. All right, so here he is with the ice pick, putting the swirls in. And again, you only have a, a, a minute or so to do, make any changes really to your glass before it gets too cool to move it. So it's a constant reheat process. It's a little bit of work and, a constant, and then reheat, a little bit of work and reheat. Um, Jen, we don't do a whole lot of special order. Um, we kind of prefer to produce uh, something and then and then sell it. Um, and we will have some lamps for sale down in Alabama. We have some lamps made. Don't you have some purple lamps made? The glass is made, but we haven't finished the lamp with some purple with what? Ghost hearts. Oh, purple with ghost hearts, yeah. Oh, I tell you, the thing about uh, custom orders is um, there's a lot of pressure when you have to do a custom order. You have to get it right the way the customer wants it. And um, that's just a lot of pressure. So we just kind of like to make 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 what we want to make, and if it comes out good, we sell it, and uh, and we enjoy it, doing it that way. putting uh, air in and expanding it. I don't know if you can see the swirls in the glass or not. Hey Debbie, thanks for joining us. Good Debbie. Yeah, I bet you you understand what I'm saying about the pressure, Vicky. I'm sure. All right, so John's going to go to the newspaper here. He just poured some water on it, to, so it'll create that layer of steam that he needs. And that newspaper protects his hand from the heat. Sun's starting to come out. We are basically working in a big tin box. So when the sun hits us, it gets pretty warm. We don't even have the fan open today. We don't even have the exhaust fan open today. Didn't, didn't need it, did you? Okay, so here he's going to drip off some excess crystal glass into the bucket there. And we will re-melt that this evening. We'll throw it back in the furnace. So 
that is his final gather of glass. So now he's got enough glass there to make the piece he's trying to make. Do they ever retire? Not really, Jan. <laughs> she said her husband's a retired iron worker. Oh, yeah? And really, do they ever retire? Now, I've got a cup that says, I thought I retired, but now I'm my wife. Ha ha. Ha ha Oh, Zach got his pumpkins. Awesome, Zach. I'm glad they came safely. Still watching for the postman, hopefully. Yeah. I don't know, Wendy. Go into um, PayPal and, and, and uh, get your tracking number out of there. Uh, I do know the post office in some areas in particular have been really slow. Um, I think uh, some of the mail is getting bottled up in some distribution centers, some sorting, sorting facilities, distribution centers, whatever they call them. Okay, so right now John's in the process of getting the piece uh, into the shape that he needs in order to go into the mold. Mary's using a wooden block. They keep that soaked in water. Do we have any more pumpkins? Uh, Debbie, I don't know right now if we're going to have any extras or not. Um, still waiting for some payments to come through from, from some people and some people that are supposed to be picking up. So I'm just kind of waiting right now to see if we have any left. If I do, I will post them up on my page. All right, there he is, um, blowing into the mold. Go right back into the glory hole. You can see he had to open a door, uh, the first door, so he's got a larger hole in the glory hole now to uh, get that inflated piece into. Just gonna put water um, on the neck of that piece when he gets ready to knock it off. At the knockoff bench, that's gonna indicate to the glass it's gonna cool it in that area, and that's where the glass will break off, crack off the pipe at. Hopefully, fingers crossed, because this is an area where you can have failure. Okay, over to the knockoff bench. There he is. He's successfully broken it off of the uh, blowpipe and now he's going to gather a little bit of crystal glass onto what we call the punty rod. And this is going to be a temporary attachment that he's going to form to the glass, to his vase. It's called turning the piece around. And basically he's turning it around so that he can work on the uh, upper section of the vase now. And if anybody's just joining us, he is making Swung vases, large swung vases. He wants that to be a the proper temperature to connect the two pieces. He just wants this to be a temporary attachment. It's a fine line between 
attached for a little while and permanently attached. Permanently attached is bad. It pulls the bottom out of your out of your vase. You won't have any bottom. You have a hole in it. So you want it to hold while you need it to hold, and you want it to come off when you need it to come off. It's it's a skill that uh, takes a while to learn. So now what he's doing is reheating the. Um, He's reheating the whole piece to keep it uh, up to temperature, and then he brings it out and just heats the uh, front end of it. So that's the piece he's going to be working on at the bench. So this part of the process here, he's just going to be working to open this piece up going to open the neck of it up till it's basically a straight up and down. Oh, have I ever tried it? Yeah, I tried it. <laughs> That's pretty much what I did when I was trying to make glass too. I would laugh. Uh, I wasn't very good at it and I didn't stay at it very long. I do help John. Um, I used to help more than I do now, but uh, yeah, I'm more of a helper kind of person. I'm no glass maker. I can, uh, I can, if he needs me to, keep his piece hot. I can, uh, you know, do all kinds of other things, but the actual process, how many years have you been making glass? part-time John a 12 years of making glass part-time Penny, we're still doing the color that we call um, Florida Mix. Um, so this piece is going to be uh, kind of a turquoise on the inside, and then a layer of white, and then a, a multicolored frit mix um, called Florida Mix with a black random trail on the outside. Okay, here's where he's going to open this uh, glory hole up bigger. You have, we have three different sizes of doors on this glory hole, and you want to keep as much heat in there as possible, so you use the smallest hole that you can to get your piece in and out of, but you definitely don't want to touch your piece to the side of the glory hole, because you will ruin it if you do. And now I think he's getting ready to open this up. He's going to spin this here. He's going to spin it, and then he's going to drop it and let it... Uh, ruffle out. Oh, I feel the heat off of that bad boy. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so we're still not out of the woods yet, quite yet on this piece. He's still got to break it off of the funny. Sometimes it spontaneously removes itself. <laughs> Where are we at? Where we are? Did a good job. Tap that punny off there. He's gonna go back with that torch and heat heat up that punchy scar. And he's gonna use our uh, Fenton's Collectibles Crown logo stamp. That marks the piece and also uh, makes that um, punchy scar look nicer. And right now he's gonna uh, put these gloves on. These Kevlar gloves, and he's gonna just get a tiny bit of heat off of that glory hole to make sure he's not going to thermal shock that piece when he picks it up. And off it goes into the annealer where it will cool down overnight and we will have a beautiful bowl tomorrow.
all right guys that's gonna be it I've got to help John do a color change so thanks y'all for watching thanks, and guys. I'll see you next time